Hey guys, we're going to divide polynomials today. Now let's start off with something simple. When you see a trinomial like this, you divide it by x. If you realize that all three of these terms are divisible by x, it's a piece of cake. So you can go, in other words, you would just take each one of these terms and divide it by x. You go, okay, divide by x, divide by x, divide by x, okay? This would give you 3x squared. This would give you 7x. This would give you just negative 1, right? Piece of cake. Something like this, a little bit different, but mostly the same. Pretty simple and straightforward. You can go ahead and put, for each one of these, 4x to the 4th power. You can divide each one of those with too not, not, without too much of a problem. Just do it individually. 12 divided by 4 is 3. X to the 12th divided by x to the 4th is x to the 8th, not 3rd. Remember, you're subtracting, right? 8th. This will be 2. X to the 8th divided by x to the 4th is x to the 4th. Don't put, don't put 2. It's the subtraction. Remember that, all right? This is a piece of cake. That's 1. X to the 6th divided by x to the 4th is x to the 2nd. And there you go. If you were to multiply those 3 out by you know, 4x to the 4th, you'd prove that you've got the right answer. All right? We're going to do something a little bit different. And I want you to make sure you don't need to copy this down exactly. But watch what I do. This is an old, you know exactly what this is all about. Okay? Let's just go through the steps verbally and mentally. You do them as I do them. And you, and you anticipate me and say them first. So 5 into 9,843. First step is to do what? Okay, 5 to 9 is one time. Then what do you do? Okay, carry it, right. 1 times 5 is 5, and then you subtract, right? Then 4, and then what do you do? Bring it down to 8. Okay, which we just keep doing. 5 into 40 this time is 9. 9 times 5, 45. Subtract, and bring the 4 around. 5 into 34, 6. 6 times 5, 30. 4, okay, look at here. 5 into 43 is 8. Now, we're going to, if we, we can put remainder of uh, 3, right? In other words, we're, we're We've subtracted, and there's a remainder of 3. We can also put plus, and then put this number here on top, and then what number goes on the bottom is the fraction of the, of the denominator, the 5, right? Okay, so we can say plus, and then put this number over this number right there, right? Okay, so that's how we do it, all right? And you will not be surprised to learn that if it works for actual numbers, then it works also for x's and y's and all that jazz, okay? So I would definitely take a second. We're going to do this one first here. We're going to do a division problem. It's going to look exactly like what we just did. It's slightly different. At first, it's going to be a little bit wonky for you, and you got to kind of go, ah, like, what, is, what did I just do here? Um, if you will just copy down very carefully and kind of use arrows and make sure that you have the, uh, like the instructions down for yourself and just copy it every single time. At first, you're going to have to keep looking back and forth over and over to make sure you're doing the right thing. After a few weeks go by, if it's hard at the very beginning and you don't, oh, you just don't like it very much, believe me, in a few weeks before you know it, you will hate it. No, I'm just kidding. You'll, it won't be so bad. You'll, you'll get it pretty well. So when you see something like this, we're going to treat this and look at this as a division problem, just like long division. All we're going to do is, you go ahead and pause if you need to, is we're going to take this and put it outside. And what we'll do is we're going to make it in order. We'll put the x first. So we're going to have x minus 3. That's going to be the first thing we write. Okay. This we're going to write in descending exponent order every single time. So we're going to put 3x to the third minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 50. And give yourself plenty of space, you know, so you can kind of make sure you write well. All right. We're going to treat this just like long division, okay? But the only difference is we divide only the x into, the, into each term. And we don't mess with the negative 3 when we divide. When we multiply it back, like when you go, oh, 5 goes into 9 one time. Then we go, oh, 1 times 5, and we stick it under the 9. We're going to do the exact same thing, except for... Again, when we divide the, this part, we just divide the x into this term. But when we, we multiply, whatever we get, we're going to multiply by both of those terms. And you'll see what happens, okay? So let's do the first one. You tell me, how many times does this x go into 3x to the third? In other words, what is 3x to the third divided by x? The answer is 3x squared, right? Okay, all right? We just divided the x in there. Now, since we are multiplying, I'm going to use a different color here. Since we're multiplying, we're going to multiply this just like we did. You know, we multiplied the 1 by this. We're going to multiply this by the entire thing. 
And that's because there are only really two a couple of steps. You do multiply, subtract, boom, we can just keep doing it over and over. Okay, 3x squared times this. Now, you don't even have to think about the first term. This times this will always be the first the term that you're working on first. Okay, so this will be 3x to the third power. Only thing you need to work out is what is 3x squared times negative 3? And that'll be negative 9x squared. Okay? This step here, of course, we subtract just like we subtracted in the last one. And this step here is where 90% or almost half of the mistakes are made. This always goes away. Don't even bother to subtract it because it'll always give you zero. All you're focusing on is this second column right here. Make sure you do it correctly. Negative 2x squared minus negative 9x squared is the same thing as negative 2x squared plus 9x squared. That will be 7x squared. Okay? All right, look back here. Once we do the subtraction and we get this number 4, what's the next step we do here? There we go. Yep, you will not be surprised to learn that this goes right down and we go 5x, okay? Now, your, my question is, now, since we have a 48, what's the next step we do here? We go 5 into 48, right? Okay, well, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to go x into this right there. Just this part right here, though. Just that part. How many times does x go into 7x squared? And the answer is 7x times, right? In other words, 7x squared divided by x is 7x, right? And again, we'll go ahead and multiply. Same thing. And I'll use the color again. Different color. 7x times x is 7x squared. All right. 7x times negative 3 is negative 21x. And we're going to subtract again. Make sure you that negative applies to everything. Make sure you get that correct. That's the number one mistake source right there. This, don't even bother if it's always 0. All you need to bother with is this part right here. Make sure you do it right. 5x minus negative 21x is the same thing as 5x plus 21x, which gives you 26x. All right. Now, what do we do else right here? What needs to be right there? That right there. So it comes down plus 50. All right. Now we divide again. So how many times does x, just like you would say, again, how many times does 5 go into 34? You'd say, okay, how many times does x go into 26x? And the answer, of course, is 26, right? Okay, so that's what we'll put right here. All right, and let's do the subtraction, and we'll finish this up. 26, of course, we don't even have to think. This first one is always the same as it was above, so you can subtract it out to 0. And then 26 times negative 3, good gravy. It's going to be negative 78 if you do the arithmetic, okay? And we'll subtract again. No thinking required on that one. It always goes away. But make sure you do the arithmetic correctly. 50 minus negative 78 is the same thing as 50 plus 78. Yes. Okay. Well, that's 128. All right. Now, just like on this last one where we said, okay, well, there's our remainder. I stuck the remainder up here as a fraction. That number goes on top. This number goes on the bottom. That's exactly the same thing we're going to do here. Well, let's say that's going to be a plus, and 128 is on the top, and an x minus 3 is on the bottom, and that is your answer. Notice in your answer, <coughs> all it's all in descending exponent uh, order. x to the second, x to the first, x to the zero. In other words, 1, 26 times 1. We could, if you wanted to, uh, multiply this by this right here and make sure that it ended up exactly this. We could also take a cement wall and bash your head against it about 50 times and probably that'd be less painful although anyway if you ever get you know an urge to do that it's kind of weird looking at this thing and and actually realizing that no this actually works it does work perfectly so all right so take here's the next page go ahead and take a second and pause it and uh let's do the same thing okay we're gonna again we're going to not think of 2 plus x, but x minus 2 we're going to write. And this goes like that. Uh, the x to the third is first. The x squared is second. The x to the first is next. And then the positive 4. Okay. Now let's do it. We're going to divide only the x into each one of these terms. Okay. So x goes into negative 2x to the third power. And again, 
Anytime you want to, you can just go negative 2x to the third divided by x and see what you get. It's going to be a negative divided by a positive, right? That'll be a negative. So 2 divided by 1, x cubed divided by x to the first is x squared. Boom. Okay. All right? Yeah, again, you're going to multiply now. And don't forget, you multiply not only this x, but also this one too. So it lines up nice and neat under what's under the uh, division symbol here. So this is always the same thing. You don't even need to think about what this first one is. Don't ever, don't bother. Just write the same thing underneath it. Now, this is where it's key. Negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4. This will always be an x, well, this will always match up with the kind of, uh, it's a like term with what's above it. Okay. Here's the subtraction. This is tricky. Make sure you get it right. This one, no need to think. It's always gone. A negative 1 minus a 4 is going to be negative 5. So you will have negative 5x squared. Drop down your negative x, okay? Now we're dividing x into this, just like we did before. Okay, negative 5 divided by 1 is just negative 5, right? x squared divided by x is x. Okay, and there we go. All right, and again, we're, we're going to multiply the negative 5 by these two things right there. And this one, we don't have to think about. It's always the same thing. This is the key, though. Negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10x. All right? And here's our subtraction. Again, this is the tricky part. That, no thinking required. Negative 1 minus 10 is negative 11. All right, so negative 11x. And, of course, we drop the 4. There she blows. Okay, so negative 11x divided by positive 1x is negative 11. And this is going to be multiplied by both of those terms. And again, this is always the same as the one above it. The second one's the one you got to watch out for. Negative 11 times negative 2 is positive 22. Okay. Let's see. We subtract. That always goes away. 4 minus 22 is the same thing as the opposite of 22 minus 4, which is yeah, negative 18. Okay. So our remainder here is minus 18 this time over what? Yep, x minus 2. Assuming you said x minus 2. If you didn't say x minus 2, wrong. Okay, all right. Okay, we'll try another type. This is weird. Go ahead and pause it and copy. Okay, now you tell me what's different about this one. The outside's okay. We had x minus 3, right? But we do 3x to the third. That's going to be the first one. What's missing? Yeah, there's no x squared. Now, you might have already put these in descending order. If you did, that's great. Totally fine, except for it's wrong. Only because you didn't know yet. Okay, we need to have something in there for x squared. So since there isn't anything, just it just helps the entire process to work if you have an x squared placeholder right there. But since there is no x squared, we're just going to write 0x squared, nothing there. Then minus 2x, then plus 5, okay? All right, pause it and go ahead and see if you can follow the same instructions, what we just did of those previous two, and see if you can, uh, see if you can work it out, see, if you, see what you get. Okay, if you have unpaused it, let's go. x goes into 3x to the third power, 3x squared times. If you multiply, you always get, of course, the same number here, the same term there. This, 3x times negative 3 is negative 9, and that's always going to be the same like term as above that. Okay, let's subtract. Make sure we do this accurately here. This is the tricky part. And again, anytime you can pause it, if you've caught up and you want to see it, you know, if you want to stay ahead. That always goes away. Don't worry about it. 0 minus negative 9 is the same thing as 0 plus 9. x squared and write down plus, oh, excuse me, that's minus 2x. Let me correct that. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, now we have to uh, divide x into 9x squared, which gives us just 9x. And again, you know, even if we have a zero there, we get something. Okay. 
All right, well, let's multiply. And we don't even need to think at all on the first one. We know what it's going to be. 9x times x. This will always be the first thing here. Same as the above. 9x times negative 3 is negative 27x. Okay. And again, here's the tricky part. Make sure you do this one right. Okay. Always gone. Negative 2 minus negative 27 is the same thing as negative 2 plus 27, so that's 25x. <whistles> Drop down your 5. Now we have x into 25x, and the answer is 25. And we'll multiply. And again, the first term is always the same, 25x. And we have 25 times negative 3, which is negative 75. And we do the subtraction. Always goes away. The first uh, term and then 5 minus negative 75 is 5 plus 75 or that's 80. Okay and this is our remainder. So we have a plus and then we have an 80 on top and then x minus 3 on the bottom and there we go. Okay. All right. Here's another one. Isn't this weird? This is a real weirdy. Okay. You probably know what to do based on the last one, right? We know what this is, right? x minus 3. We got that part. X cubed looks good. What are you going to put for X squareds? Yep, zero X squareds. How about X's? This time you put 173X. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that anymore. Okay. Oh, that's ridiculous. Okay, just, just see if you're awake there. Okay. We got a zero X, yes, of course. And then we got a minus four. Okay, pause it and give it a shot. All right, it was time for purple. So x goes into x cubed x squared times, right? We multiply this by both of these, so again, we get the same thing above there. And here's the key. Okay, that's going to be negative 3x squared. Okay, and the subtraction part is the, is the tricky part. This is always 0. 0 minus negative 3 would be 3x squared. And we drop the 0x. Okay, now we divide x into 3x squared, which will give you a 3x. And then we multiply this by both. This is always, of course, the same thing. 3x times negative 3 is negative 9x. And we subtract the whole shebang. All right, once we do that, that, of course, goes away. 0 minus negative 9 is 0 plus 9, so 9x. Drop our 4, or negative 4. And x into 9x is just simply 9. Okay. And there we go. Okay, so 9, of course, that's going to be the same thing. 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. Subtract the whole thing. Negative 4 minus negative 27 is the same thing as negative 4 plus 27. 27 minus 4 is 23. And that is our remainder. So we have plus 23 on top and then x minus 3 on the bottom. Okay, now, there we go. Okay, well, <laughs> great. Don't, don't look at the next slide. Go ahead and pause it and, and when you're ready to go do A, B, C, and D. And uh, we'll just work those all out yourselves. And then I'll show you all four answers on one slide. So. Way to finish A, B, C, and D, and then we'll, uh, then we'll look at the answers. So, all right, pause it if you need to. Okay, there you go. There are the four answers for A, B, C, and D. You can pause it, of course, if you want to. Some of these answers get pretty gigantic if, they're, if you're multiplying by these big numbers like D, 176, good gravy, you know? All right, okay. Have a great day. See you next time.